Hey guys, my name is Shane Winnings. Welcome to another episode of Pursuing Jesus Podcast. So excited that you're here because today we're going to talk about how to connect with God. How many of you would say that you believe you have a hard time connecting with God? If you feel like God is far, if you feel like He can't hear you, if you feel like He isn't listening or He doesn't care, or that he's answering everyone else's prayers but yours. I want you to say that's me in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. If you feel like there's a block between you and God or or your words bounce off the ceiling or maybe you feel like you are incapable of receiving God's love and affection in a tangible way where you feel it, say that's me in the comments. It's okay to say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm walking through. There's no shame in that. I want to help you get out of this pit with truth because truth is the only thing that will save you. And the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And I believe that God's spirit is going to come during this podcast and he's going to set you free. And many of the things that you will get set free from are simply lies. It's uh, strongholds that the enemy has tried to place over you. Remember that a stronghold is a wrong way of thinking. And many times people's connection to God is limited by their own analytical view of what it should look like. We put God in a box. We put our relationship in a box and we say, if God doesn't do these things, then I must not be connecting with him. We're going to uproot those lies today. First, thank you for listening. And I want to thank our sponsors who keep us going. Guys, please thumbs up this video if you like it at any time. Maybe you do it right now. That helps us boost uh, the algorithm so we can reach more people. So this podcast is brought to you by Promise Keepers. I am proud to be a member of Promise Keepers. We exist to build up godly men for a better tomorrow. How many of you know in this day and age we need godly men to rise up? And uh, I'm thankful to be a partner with them. And I want to encourage you, download the podcast or the uh, Promise Keepers app where there's uh, online community, virtual events, Bible and devotional plans, some of which I've written and recorded. And also um, there's dates and things for upcoming in-person events, which I'm very excited about. So make sure you follow us there. Aligned Mortgage also is one of our sponsors. So thankful for them. Listen, if you're a veteran and you're trying to get a home loan, this is the place to go. I'm going to say it every single episode because we are so grateful we went through Aligned. They exist to help teach veterans about their VA loan. They want you to own a piece of land that you defended. That's what it's all about. And only 15% of veterans use their VA loan, which means 85% don't don't know they have it, don't know how to use it, don't know anything about it. They want to teach you. They want to help you. And best of all, they're not some big bank, so they're not only looking at the numbers. They consider the person and your story. They're amazing to work with. So go to alignedmortgage.com, ask for Ronnie, tell him Shane sent you from the podcast, and they will hook you up. Let's get back to this. We're talking about connecting with God. Now, this is the most important thing I believe that I can say in this podcast. Connection to God does not equate to feeling God. I'm going to say that again. Connecting to God is not equal to feeling God. Oh, well, I haven't felt the tingles in a while. I haven't felt this presence. I haven't felt... Feelings are sensual. Now, they're not bad, In fact, feelings were given to us by the Lord, but we have to be under a spirit of self-control, which means we are not led by our feelings. I've said this before, I've heard it from people long before I ever started saying it, that feelings are great, but they're horrible leaders. We cannot be led by feelings. What happens when we are led by feelings and emotions is that we begin to analyze and assess And come to conclusions that are totally void of truth because, well, that's just how I feel. And in this day and age, what that sounds and looks like is people saying, well, this is my truth. This is what I believe to be true. Now, we might look at someone like that and say, hey, there is no your truth. There's only the truth. But then we could turn around and say, well, I haven't felt God, so he must. You see how those two, they kind of go hand in hand. 
both situations, the people who say those things are living sensually. And so we have to get out of that. So there's a couple of tools and strategies that I want to give you in this podcast. This is going to be a practical equipping podcast to help you do things to connect to God. And you say, well, how do I know I'm connecting to God? Because this is biblical. When we talk about uh, praise and worship, the Bible says we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. And so if you approach the Lord with thanksgiving and praise, you can know that you are in his gates and you are in his courts. You are in his presence. Uh, The Bible tells us, you know, we look at the story of Daniel. The angel told Daniel, from the moment you opened your mouth, your prayers were heard. We know that when we pray, God hears us. This is the truth. We might not feel that because maybe our prayers haven't been answered or they haven't been answered in the way that we hoped they would or maybe things even got worse. But how many of you know there's an enemy out there who is testing our faith and he's testing the genuineness of our faith? We can say that we have faith, but when things don't go our way, all of a sudden it can be very easy for us to begin to say, well, If God was there, he would do this. If he really heard me, this would happen. If God was even real, then... Come on, we're not going to be people that talk ourselves out of believing in God because life didn't go the way we hoped it would. And that starts with a lack of understanding and revelation of connecting with God. I don't ever need to feel God's presence again to know that he's with me. I love him, and I believe his word. And so one way that we can connect with God is by reading, reading the Bible. The Bible is God's word. This isn't some religious duty that we need to keep up with. This is God's word. Don't you want to know what God has said? And above just knowing it, don't you want that in your heart? You need to hide God's word in your heart because I've, I've preached this. When life squeezes you, whatever's inside is what's coming out. And you want the word of God to be all you know. Paul even said this, I have determined to know nothing except Christ and Christ crucified. He's like, I don't want anything else to to steal my gaze or my attention. I only want to know Jesus Christ and him crucified. He wants to be brainwashed by the word of God and by truth so that this is the only thing he can fall back on. In life, you know, we grow up and we've been experiencing so many different things and we've been fathered by the world. And what happens is we have other uh, ways of thinking to fall back on. This is where we get this analytical mind of saying, well, if God did this, then he would have done that. And if he was here, he would have. We begin to say what God should have and would have done. Instead of just maintaining our profession of faith and holding fast to the promises of God, and believing our prayers were heard, and knowing that God loves us, and he's got a plan for our life, and he's working all things for our good. And yeah, maybe there is an enemy out there who's doing some things, but guess what? I'm not going to let him win. I'm not going to give up my faith. Amen? Listen, if you're with me on that, say that in the comments. Say I'm with you. If you want to be a person who stands firm in the faith, regardless of what comes your way, So one of the ways to do that is reading the Bible and praying it over yourself. It's so powerful. You know, you read, you know, let me pull up. uh, I just got back from a trip and my Bible is in my backpack, which is right over there. And I just didn't want to grab it. Let's look at this. I'll just flip open to any, you know, whatever came up. It was 1 John 3. Verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Now I pause right there and I begin to pray. Father, I thank you. You have loved me so much that you've given me the right to become a child of God. And now I belong to you. I've given my life to you. And I am your child. Lord, thanks for loving me. I love you too. And I'm so excited to be your son. I'm so excited to be your daughter. Let's keep reading. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Lord, I know that there are times where people, uh, they, they paint an image on me that's untrue or, or I am confusing to the world. I'm misunderstood. But Lord, your word says here it's because they didn't know you. The world rejected you. They did not receive you. They killed you. Lord, of course they would reject me. 
A servant is not greater than his master. And Lord, I just thank you. I'm following in your footsteps. I will not take uh, take this personally. I will not get offended at people who don't understand me or, or call me names or whatever because they did it to you also. And Lord, I'm just thankful to walk this same road as you. Verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Lord, I thank you that there is coming a day where I will be transformed. I will have a new body. I will be living by my spirit. I will spend eternity with you. Father, I thank you for sending your son. And Jesus, I can't wait to meet you. Your word says that when you are revealed, we shall be like you, for we will see you as you are. I can't wait to see you as you are, God. I can't wait to have nothing between us, no sin, no no earthly experience. I can't wait to just be in your presence, be in heaven, be wherever you are forever. I'll finish with verse 3. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Father, thank you. This hope lives inside of me. This hope that I'm going to be with you forever. This hope that you are going to transform me to make me like you and, and to be clearly in your image, not tainted by the world or sin or anything like that. Lord, I can't wait. And your word says that when I keep this hope, I purify myself. Lord, I'm asking you to help me purify myself more and more. I want to live for you. I want to walk this narrow path. I want to follow your commands. Come on. All I did was read three verses out of 1 John 3. And I'm already praying, I'm declaring truth, I'm connecting with God, and I'm speaking the word back to him, and I'm affirming it in my own heart. Does that seem like it's going to help anyone? Let me know in the comments if you're hearing this and just like, wow, I need to do that. I love reading my Bible that way. It's very powerful. Um, We're talking about prayer. You know, many times people will approach prayer as a time to make their requests known to God, and it's true. We're called in the Bible to make our requests known. But more importantly than just making our requests known, we should be using prayer to strengthen our relationship with God. Remember that prayer is also about self-edification, building yourself up in the Lord. And I wrote a devotional right here that will help you do that. It's called I Will Always Overcome. It is a nine-week devotional. And I believe you get a copy of this. It's only like $9 on Amazon not trying to make a bunch of money off of it or anything. $9 on Amazon. And for the next nine weeks, I will teach you and walk you through what it looks like to wake up in the glory of God, to pray just for a couple of minutes and get your eyes off of yourself and onto Jesus. Because I believe, and the Bible teaches, that when Jesus is the point of our gaze, when he is the focus of our attention, we will be transformed. When we're constantly looking at self, we're not going to be transformed to look like him. We become what we behold. And I believe my devotional will help you behold Jesus Christ every single morning and teach you how to pray. I don't just have prayers written out so that you can pray them. I teach you how and why we're praying the way that we are so that you can encounter God every single day. Now let's talk about worship. We've talked about reading the Bible. We've talked about prayer. Let's talk about worship. Now I want to say this too. When you are seeking the presence of God, when you are going to spend time with God or when you're going to encounter God, um, you might have time for all three. You might have time to pray and to worship and to read your Bible. But sometimes I pick one or the other, or maybe two out of the three. Sometimes I will just go and worship, and that's all I'll do because I can tell that's what my spirit needs. Sometimes I get myself in the Word And I just spend forever in the Word because I know I need the Word of God inside of me. And I do believe a Christian should be reading the Word for at least some part of the day, every single day. It's so important to hide God's Word in your heart. But say that you're going to worship. If you're trying to get into the presence of God, uh, I like to pick my favorite worship songs. and, And the ones that I remember encountering God in, where I really felt led into His presence. And I think about a couple of those. And some of them I just know if I put them on, like I am going to be in the right mindset of, man, God, you're here. You're really here. And I'm with you. And there's no divide between us. There's no veil. I can reach you. You can hear me. And that's important. Uh, Worship is amazing because your mind cannot focus on multiple things at once. 
your mind can really only focus on one emotion at a time. And when you grab a hold of worship, you are taking your eyes off of yourself, off of your circumstances, and you are putting them on Jesus. And so I often tell people, if you're in a mental battle or you're in a spiritual war, prayer is great. But sometimes prayer can turn into striving, and we're just trying to bind and rebuke and ask God for all these things. Sometimes reading your Bible is tough when you are in a spiritual battle because you just you have so many words and thoughts going on. But there's something about worship. There's something about worship when life seems to be just pressing in on you, or maybe it's totally crashing down. Worship is a weapon. And worshiping God in the midst of your trials is such a powerful thing to do. It will correct your mind and your way of thinking, and then you can release a powerful prayer. I just want to leave that with you because I believe some of you maybe just simply need to worship in the season that you're in right now. Now, when you need a victory, why don't you think about the worship songs that declare truth or God's faithfulness and and promises over your life? You want to get your mind in the place of uh, where your faith is. If you're believing for a miracle, listen to songs that declare God's truth about miracles and God's uh, heart to answer our our questions and, and answer our prayers and deliver on His promises. This is just aligning what you're listening to with what you're believing for. Now, here's one of my favorite ways to worship. It's called soaking. Now, With soaking, you can either make a playlist or you can just put one song on. I personally love just putting one song on repeat. And I will literally listen to one song for like 30 minutes or an hour. And um, right now I'm in a Stephanie Gretzinger phase. Uh, Shadow of Shaddai is like, it's wrecking me. I've been in a a, um, United Pursuit phase, you know, the, the song Hidden. I would play that like 50 times in a row, literally. And I would just let, or Garden by United Pursuit, it's such a powerful song. But I would just let this truth wash over me again and again and again and again and again. To where I'm not trying to move on to another song. I want to receive what this song is about. I want to worship God through what this song is saying. And I want to grab a hold of the meaning of it and the heart of it. And I want it to be uh, where my heart position is as well. And um, you get brainwashed when you do that. I mean, that's how they brainwash people is they do things over and over and over again. The Bible tells us to be washed with the word, to renew our minds. And it's so important when life and the enemy and just the world are, are, are striving to get your attention, to get you to think and look and do it this way, and you redirect your focus and you hone in on one song that's filled with truth and you just beat yourself over the head with it over and over again until you can't think differently. It's so powerful. I want to encourage you to do that. Another way to soak is to just make a playlist of the same kind of music, maybe some chill songs. They aren't upbeat. They're not driving songs. They're not crazy intense. They're calm. They're still songs that you can pray alongside of, but then you could also slip back into worship. And you're just creating this atmosphere of like, it's a gentle spirit you know, in the room. And uh, it's it's sometimes upbeat worship songs when you just really need to hear God. It's hard to hear God when the drums are going, the electric guitars, you know, you got to dial it back. This is just practical stuff, but maybe you've never thought of it. So here's what I'd love for you to do. If you're watching on YouTube, comment which one of these do you think um, you're going to start doing more? Maybe if you already do one, let me know. What's your favorite thing to do when you just, you want to go sit in God's presence, you want to encounter him? Um, I personally love soaking and I love praying the word over myself. It's so powerful to me. Here's how we'll finish. At the end of the day, it is about meeting with God by faith. It's not about the tingles. And I want to ask you this question. If you never felt God again, would he still be worthy? Would he be worthy of your time? Would he be worthy of your attention if you never felt his tangible presence again? If you never felt God again, would you still pray and worship? If those questions are hard for you to answer, it reveals that there is a sensual part of the way that you view your relationship with God, and that's got to go. The answer should be overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly yes. 
If I never felt God again, it's not about feeling God. It's about knowing God. Of course I would pray. He's worthy of my prayers, and he hears me when I pray. He's a good father. He's perfect. Of course I would worship. He's worthy of all of my worship. There's nothing that could get me to stop praying and worshiping God. Final little analogy. I love sharing this. I had this picture a couple months ago, and I've been preaching it off and on at different places, and when the Lord recalls it to my mind. Jesus taught his disciples when he was teaching them how to pray. He said, go into your room. Go into your your closet. Close the door and meet with your Father who is in secret. Jesus tells us where the Father is. He's in the secret place. And so I want you to imagine, for me it's early in the morning, but it could be a different time for you, but for this for this uh, analogy, let's just say it's early in the morning. Imagine that Jesus came to you right now after this podcast, and he said, hey, tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., 5.30 or 6, or whenever time, I'm going to be in your closet, or I'm going to be in your room sitting on your bed. Would you come meet with me? What if he was really there in the flesh, would you go? Would you be late? Would you schedule something else? Would you sleep in? Of course you wouldn't. You would be that. You'd probably try to get there early, hoping that he's there early so you can get more time. You see, here's the truth. God is in the secret place. And so either we don't believe that he's really there, or we believe that there is something better to do. And you know as well as I do, even hearing this, that that's not true. There's nothing better than spending time with God. I have no better plans. So maybe it's that first one. Maybe you're struggling to believe God's really in there. You go by faith. You don't go by feelings. And I pray that these tools that I've given you today will help you to continue pursuing Jesus. Amen? Guys, thanks so much for listening. Look, if this spoke to you at all, please consider sharing it. Hit that copy link button. Post it to your social media. Send it to some friends and family if you got a group chat. This could help people connect with God. That's what I want. I want people to just connect with God. And then you, you won't need to listen to any podcast because you'll just be hearing from God every day and you'll be getting fed through the Word, and that's amazing. Um, So I pray that that blesses you. Finally, guys, we are looking for people to partner with us monthly. We are asking to consider giving a dollar a day to our ministry. So if you want to donate, you can go to shanewinnings.com slash donate and sign up to give $30 a month. That will help us continue to preach the gospel all over the country. I've been traveling so much, as you may have noticed if you follow me, or just due to the lack of podcast episodes over the last uh, week and a half. I've been everywhere, and I'm so glad to be back for a couple of months as we prepare to meet my new son. I'll be working from home, not traveling anywhere. That means tons of podcasts, tons of video content, and uh, I'm excited and thankful for people like you who support us financially and in your prayers that keep us going. Guys, thanks so much. We'll see you next time.